Hello and welcome to a brand new series of game development tutorials on how to make your first game in Godot. This video tutorial series will guide you through everything you need to know and I'll even provide you with all the scripts and assets in each video if we use any. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload and feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll find all the scripts and assets we use in this series there too along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. The game we'll be building in this series will be a cool 2D platform game, and the aim is to make a fully functional game for free just by following along with me in each video. So who is this tutorial series for? Well, it's going to be aimed at newcomers to the game development world as well as intermediate developers. And if you've never used Godot before, then this video will be just right for you. I will take you from a beginner level to an intermediate level by the end of the series. And even if you're a veteran to making games, perhaps in Unity or Unreal, then stick around just to see how we do things in this engine and how we achieve the desired effect and how it differs from something like Unity or Unreal, but then also how it is extremely similar. So this first tutorial, we will explore how to get Godot on your PC, why it's really good for making 2D games, and we'll jump into developing the game as well as looking around the engine and understanding its interface. So how do we get it onto our machine? Real simple, godotengine.org. Head to here where it says download latest, and you'll see Godot Engine right here. The latest version for me is 17th of April, 2024, which was three days ago. It's a nice stable platform and it works very well. Once you've downloaded it, the great thing about it is it doesn't need an installation. No need at all. You just run this. And when you do, you'll be presented with something very similar to this window. What is this window? This is where we can see all of our projects. You can see I only have two on this laptop right now because this is kind of a, a fresh build. Uh, but how do we get our first project in? Real simple. All we need to do is click on new at the top and you can name your project. As this is a 2D game, let's call this 2D platformer. And rather than click create folder, select the path you want to save it in. So you can save in your documents, you can save it in a subfolder. Once you've selected where you have it, that's when you click on create folder. And this will turn into a tick, like so. Now here we have the renderer. This is somewhat important. So what do these mean? Well, Forward Plus is, put simply, if you want to develop for PC, if you want something really good visually, something that is going to be strong on the power, you would select Forward Plus. Mobile is more for mobile games, but that doesn't mean it is just for mobile. You can develop for PC as well. And compatibility is, well, if you want to make something on a potato phone then yes, you would use compatibility. That enables you to make things on any device, but keep in mind, Forward Plus is the best you can get in terms of visuals. Compatibility is the worst you can get in terms of visuals, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. I'm going to select mobile for this, not specifically because we want to develop for mobile, because we initially want to develop for PC, but I want the ability to develop for mobile should we choose that along the way. And it doesn't matter if you want to change your mind halfway through development, you can change it if you want to. So what do we do now? Quite obvious, create an edit. And once you've clicked that button, you'll be presented with something that looks a little like this. And this should look familiar to people in the game engine and game development world. So it does look very similar to other engines, but there are a couple of differences. So what we need to do is let's first take a look around at what we have. Let's start over here at the top left. Here we have the scene panel. And the scene panel works a little bit differently in Godot, or scenes in general work a little bit differently than something like Unity. A scene can be thought of as like a container which can hold anything together, whether it be a whole level or a player with animations. And you'll notice that we have uh, a selection to create a root node here. What is a node? Well, in plain and simple terms, it's an element which you can combine to create theoretical objects to use in your game. And these 
all come together into a scene to make everything much easier to handle, basically so you don't end up in a massive mess. This big window in the middle is where you build your game visually, and naturally it seems very familiar to people if you have already used other engines. So anything we use asset-wise ends up in this window, and this is where we develop. Over on the right, we have this inspector panel, and it's where we can see more in-depth information about anything we have selected. We'll be using this quite a lot. A lot of information that you have on any game object within your game is going to be stored over here in the inspector panel, and you can change it quite easily. Think of something like, well, again, Unity, but I feel the inspector panel in Godot is much more refined and useful. Down here we have the file system panel, and this one is used to store all your assets. So whereas you've got something like, um, let's say, some audio, some pictures, some scripts, they would all be stored in some nice, neat and tidy folders down here in the file system. So yeah, all assets stored here. So that is all the basic panels that we'll be using. There are more, but we can explore them as and when we need to. We have some options here at the top, and we can bring our big game panel into 2D or 3D. We can also view the code for scripts, and we have the asset library too. Since we'll be using this for a 2D game, let's go ahead and select 2D. Let's use our mouse now and explore what we can do in this window. Obviously the mouse wheel is going to zoom in and out, and you can also set your zoom right here. Doesn't matter whether it's always set as 100 or whether it's well, 94.4, because you can always play around. Holding the middle mouse button, we'll be able to pan around the scene. Right, we'll add a little menu, which we'll use at some later point in this series. So, over here, we have the option in Scene Menu, and it says Create Root Node. So what does this mean exactly? Well, like I explained earlier, nodes are key to game development in Godot. And what we want to do is create a node. And like I say, this is for a 2D game. So let's create a 2D scene. And let's rename this to level one. Since we are actually developing a game and this scene right here is going to be our very first level, it makes sense to call it level one. Next thing we need to do is let's save this scene. So we can go to scene. Save scene as, and much like it is with exploring Windows or whatever system you want to use, right click, new folder, and rather than call this folder scenes, I feel it's necessary to add a prefix to that. So, for example, these are going to be level scenes, so we, I'm going to call the folder level scenes. And inside that folder now, I'm just going to click save. I'm not going to rename the file itself. I'm happy to keep it named as level one. Click save. And you'll notice down here in the file system, we now have that folder with our level one asset scene. Excellent. So what we'll do next is we're going to press play and we're going to be presented with not an error, but a warning message. And it says no main scene has been defined. Select one. So what this means is that Godot has to have a main scene before it can render anything, basically. And you could theoretically set this one right here, say select. But that's cheap and easy. How do you actually do this? You can't just go to play every time and assume it'll do this. Let's go and find the correct setting to set before we actually play it. So let's go to project, project settings. And under application, you can go down to run. And here you'll see the option for main scene. So let's click on the folder icon. Let's go into that level scenes folder and let's go into level one. And that's now set as our main scene. So we can close that. Yes, there are many other options in the project settings and we'll go over them as and when we need to. So right now, if we press play, it will build it and it will throw up the little debug window, and that is currently our game. It's just a big grey window because there is nothing in our game. That's going to come in the next tutorial. So next time what we'll do is we are going to add some assets to our game, 
and we're going to build our first level so we'll be able to visually see something by the end of next tutorial. It really is that simple. So remember to subscribe and click on the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial in this series and I will see you next time.